Welcome back. You don't want your users creating passwords that hackers can easily guess. That's why you'll need to implement some form of password validation. Basically, not allowing users to pick predictable and thus vulnerable passwords. Entropy is a measure of randomness. So we want users to create passwords with a high level of entropy. Very random, very difficult to guess. The Go Password Validator package, which we'll be using, takes a different approach to this. Uh, other forms of password validation will try to increase the entropy in your password by making requirements like, hey, you need to have uppercase, you might need to have numbers or special characters. Well, the Go Password Validator package does it differently. It just looks at how much entropy you have in your password, and if you don't have enough, it's going to ask you to create another password. So, uh, and this can make it a little bit easier on users, uh, not only remembering something, because remember our end goal isn't trying to get a user to create a password that has some special character or uppercase letters in it. And we just want them to have the most random, most difficult password for hackers to guess as possible. So sometimes really good passwords might not be allowed, you know, in the in most forms of uh, password validation. And then sometimes a really weak password could actually get by. So looking at the example they have here, uh, they're looking, think of the word uh, troubadour and they're adding, you have to add say a number, a special character, and they, you know, maybe they want two numbers, an uppercase letter. And when the user goes back and looks at this, I mean, it might only have 28 bits of entropy, which isn't a whole lot. So it's kind of an easy password to guess, but it could still be very hard for the user I guess well, like, hey, was this one a zero? Which one was the capital letter? What number did I throw in there? What's you know, special character? Where in another situation, you know, something like this, correct horse battery staple, this would not be allowed. This has 44 bits of entropy and would be much more difficult to guess. But uh, using this package, this one would be allowed. And you can even think of some mnemonic uh, devices to help you remember this. So like correct horse battery staple. So this guy's imagining, hey, uh, a horse is telling him that that is a battery staple, even though that's probably not even a thing. And he's saying, okay. But uh, point being, uh, this gives the user more freedom to be able to create a password as long as it has more entropy. And that's remember, that's our end goal. We just want it very random, very difficult to guess. So... Uh, Basically, it does a couple other things as well, has some safety features. So if you put, you know, the same letter several times when it calculates the entropy, that doesn't, you know, that's not the same as, you know, four different separate letters. You know, same thing here. It's three. It's just, you know, counting it as two anytime it has a whole bunch of repeating letters. So it's going to err on the side of caution. So it's going to say the score, the entropy score is a little bit lower. And so if you do something like that, it's not going to count. It's also going to look at some of these other, uh, looks like these other sequences as well. So uh, let's go ahead and go to our code. The package that we'll be using is at GitHub. Uh, I'm not sure how you say this part. I'm just going to guess Wags Lane. Uh, I believe one of the creators is Lane Wagner. So I believe this is just a play on words. Uh, go password validator. So to access this package, uh, we're just going to use the word password validator. We're going to go ahead and set a constant, and this is going to be uh, what level of entropy. Now we want to pick a number between 50 or 70. That's recommended. So if our password isn't at least 60, well, we're not going to go ahead and accept that password. We're going to ask the user to create a new password. Um, some more Boilerplate code, we're going to use gen.default to return our router, our engine, which is going to handle all of our routing, as you can see down here. It's also going to use the load HTML glob to go ahead and load up, uh, parse all of our templates in the templates folder that end in .html. Uh, we're going to go ahead and run our engine. And if we have any errors, well, we're going to go ahead and log it and you know just shut down the application. So are two different routes here at, at slash register. One of them is a git method and one of them is a post method. So our handler for the register git handler here, well, it's just going to use our gen context. It's going to use the HTML method. We're asking the status code. Okay. 
and it's going to render our register.html uh, template and it's not passing anything in. So this one's just a form that's you know, for our password validation and it's just going to ask for our password when we hit submit. Again, it's going to be at slash register, but this one's going to be a different method. It's going to be post instead of a get. So this is a post method, which if we go back to our main function, well, the post method at slash register is going to run this different handler we have down here. So we're just going to use the, on our gen context, we're going to go ahead and use the post form method to go ahead and grab uh, that password input and you know, get that value. And we're going to save it in a variable called password. And we're going to use the get entropy function, which returns the entropy in bits for the given password. And like I said, we want a number between 50 and 70. So we're taking this password we got from our form, we're passing it in, and it's going to give us how much entropy that we got. And then we're just going to go ahead and print that just so we can you know, see what it is. Now we could actually just skip this part if we wanted to, but anyway, we're going to use the validate to make sure that we have enough entropy. So validate returns nil if the password has greater than or equal to minimum entropy. If not, error is returned. That explains how password can be, can be strengthened. This error is safe to show the client, which we'll actually be passing through right here. So uh, if it's safe, uh, it's going to go ahead and be nil. But if we don't have enough entropy on this password from our form, well, then it's going to go ahead and tell us, uh, it's going to go ahead and pass us an error. Uh, down here, we're checking to see if it's not nil. And if it's not, well, we're going to go ahead and send the user back to the register.html uh, page. So again, we're going to use the HTML method, uh, status bad request. They didn't give us a good enough password. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send them back to the register.html and we're using the built-in gen.h uh, data type and just saying, hey, uh, message, and we're passing in that error. So we're going to send them back to this page. So if they're, if message does exist, well, we're just going to go ahead and show them that message. So back to here. But let's say they did have enough entropy. Uh, this didn't run and this part gets to run. Well, Again, we're going to use the HTML method. We're going to say status code OK. Uh, we're going to send them to a different page, register uh, success.html. And we're going to go ahead and just, we don't need to pass this in, but we're just going to go ahead and pass in how much entropy so they can see uh, how good of a password it is. So let's go ahead and run this. There we go. Okay. So as you can see here, uh, terrible password, one, two, three, four. So not a very good one. We hit submit and secure password. So this is the error that we were getting. So this error that was produced here, remember this is safe to show the client. Uh, we're just passing it in right here through our message. We're just letting the user know a, try including more special characters using lowercase letters, using uppercase letters, or using longer password. So if we come up with a password, a bunch of, you know, random stuff, hit submit, password accepted. Um, that was an entropy of 89, almost, uh, almost 90. So that would have been a good password. That would have been a very difficult password to guess. Go back to our our code here. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's look, I got a little demonstration here to take a look at. So let's really common passwords are also really terrible passwords. So besides just being common, well, they also usually have very low entropy. They're not very random. So to kind of demonstrate how well this package weeds out terrible passwords. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and loop through a file here, which is uh, Daniel Miser's SEC list. This is the 10,000 most common passwords. So we're going to go ahead and check every single one of these and see if they have as much entropy as our minimum requirement. So um, anyway, I'm not going to go ahead and click 
I'm not going to go ahead and click on this one. Unfortunately, just uh, view at your own risk because uh, a lot of obscenities and just, yeah, people have dirty minds and yeah, they save terrible things as passwords. So uh, this is going up on YouTube, so I'm not going to click on that. But anyway, you've been warned. We go back to our, our code here. So we're going to use the OS, the operating systems package. We're going to use the open function to return our os.file data type, which is going to give us access to methods that we're going to use. And we're going to be opening our 10,000 most common passwords uh, as we have saved right here in the same uh, directory. And we're going to make sure that we close that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and create an entropy variable. And we're going to go ahead and create a slice of string variable called words. We're going to go ahead and use the uh, buff IO package. We're going to use the new scanner function to return our new scanner data type. And we're going to go ahead and pass in our file, which we opened up up here. And this is going to give us our scanner. So this is going to allow us to loop through this using our for loop. It's going to be scanner and dot scan, our scan method. And this is just going to go ahead and loop through each one of these. So uh, this package that we have up here, it's just uh, a password by itself on each line. That's all there is to it. It's just one password. I know there was 10,000 lines with 10,000 passwords. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and loop through 10,000 times. And we're going to go ahead and append whatever we have on words already onto words, as well as whatever we scan, whatever the text is on this particular particular loop. So it's going to go ahead and put, you know, 10,000 passwords, one at a, you know, one for each loop onto our slice of string called words. Okay. So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and just print length of words, which is just going to tell us, you know, how many different passwords we have. We're going to go ahead and range through this, this slice. And then we're going to go ahead and use the password validator, uh, get entropy, uh, we're going to be using this one to return the entropy uh, because I want to go ahead and just print it off down here. We're going to go ahead and pass in that value, which is going to be you know, each time through is going to be a password. And then we're going to see if that entropy returned from that password. Well, is it, is that entropy greater than our minimum entropy bits, which we set up here, which we said you know, we wanted between you know 50 and 70. If we want to increase this, we could. So, and if one of them does have, that much entropy will, then we're going to go ahead and just print off how much entropy it is. Um, I purposely didn't print off uh, the value there because like I said, a lot of people have dirty mind when it comes to creating passwords. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. As you can see, we had 10,000 different passwords and only three of them had enough entropy. As you see, we said at 62 of them barely hit that mark. So, uh, uh, goes to show it helps to sort out a lot of common passwords. If you still want to implement something like this, you can always use you know something like this. And say if you wanted to pull up a package that had more than ten thousand, I mean you could really get rid of a lot. You know, double check to make sure there's definitely you know none of these uh, really common passwords. But, uh, anyway, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Uh, every little bit helps, and it is greatly. Appreciated. I hope you liked the video and I hope to see you at the next one.